Okay. I'm on a time limit. Hi friends, welcome back to another video. Today I am back with a book video. It's been a hot minute, I'm not going to lie. I have had, what's it been, maybe four months since I have done anything book related specifically. Mainly because my first trimester of pregnancy was really rough and I did not have any, I don't know if it was like patience or I couldn't concentrate or what it was, but I just couldn't read. I think I maybe read one book during my pregnancy, my first trimester. So things were a little rough, but I am back into reading. I'm not going to lie, I do not get as much time to read now that I'm not breastfeeding. That has been one thing that has absolutely changed the game for me because when I was breastfeeding Harper, I would feed her three or four times a day and sit there for 20 minutes, still being able to read. And I was being productive because I was feeding my baby. However, now she isn't breastfed, which means when she's awake, there is no 20 minute of sit down time. So I'm definitely not consuming as many books now as I was, however, I don't think that matters. I still love books. I love to talk about books. I love reading books. I love talking with you guys in my DMs about the books I'm reading. I love doing a question box and asking you what you're reading. So I figured I'm still allowed to talk about books, even if I am not reading nearly as many as I would like to or what I was earlier in the year. Probably averaging one book every eight to 10 days at this point. Sometimes I can smash it out in a week, but generally I only really get to read before Harper wakes up if I'm up having my coffee or once she has gone to bed and I'm winding down for the night, which then we go to my parents tonight, we go to Hayden's parents tonight. You know, there's just, I'm a busy gal. But I have read a few books lately and I honestly can't remember what the last book I would have told you guys I read was and whether or not it was Archer's Voice or After I Do. Or if I haven't spoken about those yet. I'm going to start with talking about After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Whether I've talked about this or not, I apologise if I have, but I'm going to talk about it anyway because Taylor Jenkins Reid is someone who I, I really like her writing style, I've enjoyed her books, but I don't think I love her as much as everyone else does. I don't know. I read this book before, so I obviously enjoyed it quite a bit. I think this was the book I was reading in my first, like when I first, first found out I was pregnant. And yeah, I don't know. It's about a couple who decide that they want to take a year off their marriage. Basically their marriage is struggling and instead of just getting divorced and saying, we don't make each other happy anymore, let's try something else. They decide to take a year to find themselves and see if they can then learn to appreciate each other again and blah, blah, blah. They do a lot of soul searching, working, However, you only see her year, so you don't see what he is doing at all. Um, so Ryan, the husband, he's basically just gone for a year. You obviously see him in the start, you see a lot of flashbacks, that sort of thing, but he's not really here. So it's like a romance, but it's like not a romance at the same time. It's more her learning who she is out of the romance and out of the relationship. And they just got to the stage where like everything they were doing was annoying each other and they just weren't happy with each other. And I think it's a really cool thing for like when people realize that things aren't working and instead of just giving up, they find ways to fix it. Personally, I don't think I would ever just take a year off my marriage, but I do think it's really good to catch yourself if you are unhappy in a situation and not giving up and learning how to live with it. Personally, I feel like marriage is like a forever thing. You get married to work through any hardships that you have together. I think it's not just a... I don't know. Personally, I find marriage, I take marriage very seriously. And we've been, Hayden and I have been married for two years now. And I think when, if slash when we ever come into problems where we feel maybe not as happy with each other or we've, you know, we're struggling or whatever it is, we always, you know, do what we need to to fix that. And I think that's how it should be. So, although a very unconventional way of doing it, I do appreciate that they tried to fix their marriage. I did really enjoy the story and I loved seeing her learn to live by herself and be independent and it was really amazing in so many ways and I do highly recommend it. I love the concept of this story. I just didn't love her, I think. I wasn't obsessed with the main character, Lauren. So yeah, I don't know if that's a book that sounds interesting to you. I do recommend it because I did enjoy it. I gave it a four stars, which, you know, is pretty high 
it's very rare these days that I give a book a five star. It has to be actually like perfect to get a five star from me. So yeah, a really good book. I do like Taylor Jenkins Read and yeah. The next book I read was Archer's Voice and this was due to Rachel Catherine. It's her favourite book. She recommended it to me. Well, not even just me. She recommends it to the world because it's her favourite book. And I loved it. I really love Mia Sheridan's style of writing. It did take me a hot minute to get through because I was vomiting lots due to pregnancy at this point. However, I loved Archer's Voice. I love a slow burn story. I love it. They are in like a small country like a small town. I like small town vibes. I love a slow burn romance. I don't, I'm not that into people falling in love straight away. <laughs> Strangers to friends to lovers kind of, but if you don't already know what Archer's voice is about, it is about Archer and he does not talk. Now I don't want to give away why he doesn't talk, but he does not talk. And a lot of the town sort of just think he's a bit weird and a bit like I don't know, everyone's just a bit off him. Like, no one's no one's really a big fan of Archer, but no one has ever really given the time to... No one's really tried, if I'm completely honest. Like, no one has ever tried to communicate with him and tried to be friends with him or anything like that. And Brie moves to this town, and she is intrigued by Archer. And she, they end up spending a lot of time together, and, yeah, it's a very... Mia Sheridan's writing is quite slow. I would say if you're wanting like a fast paced book, I would not pick this up because it's not, there's nothing fast paced about the way she writes, but there is something very lyrical about the way she writes. She writes really beautiful, wholesome. It's like she's really taken her time to bring true love into these stories. And I also like that she, in both the books I've read by her, it's not a love can conquer anything type of story. And I really appreciate that with Mia Sheridan's writing. And so I would highly recommend, if you have not read it, I rated this a 4 or a 4.5. I really loved it. I got through it, although I was very unwell. I definitely was finding time to read this whenever I could. And I very much enjoyed it. The next book I read was Finding Perfect. And that is the like last book I think yeah it's the last book in like the um hopeless slash perfects series I don't know it's kind of confusing but like there's characters from the hopeless series and characters from all your perfects and they sort of cross over like they're in the same world there's a couple of the characters then cross over this was a novella I read it quite quickly I think it was like 80 pages or 120 pages something like that I really liked it as far as a novella goes I feel like Novellas are hard to rate too highly because often you don't get to know the characters, but we already know these characters. So I actually really enjoyed it. I rated it a four stars and I would highly recommend. Obviously you would have to read the other books in these books. It's by Colleen Hoover. It was really good. There's not really a whole lot to say because I wouldn't want to give away the other book storylines by giving away this storyline, if that makes sense. So yeah, if you're reading Hopeless or the Find Your Perfects, Find your all your perfects. I didn't love all your perfects. I'm not gonna lie. I think I read it like a three because it just wasn't my favorite. But it is interesting how the characters from that come into other stories, and I love that. I love when authors can get books to mesh together, and I would highly recommend this. Next, I read Where the Cruel Dads Sing, and even two months later, I don't know how I feel about this book because it's beautiful. It's beautifully written. The story is incredible. It is thought-provoking. It's a coming of age. I think somewhere it says it's a romance, but I wouldn't say that. And it also is technically like a murder mystery, but I also wouldn't say that. I would say it's just so... It's, it's like a beautiful story, but it's also really heartbreaking and really horrible at the same time. So it is about a girl called Kaya, I think. Yes. It was about a young girl called Kaya and her family basically abandoned her over the years and she lives in a marsh and just has this like little rundown home where she lives, her mum leaves and her siblings leave and it's just her and her dad for a long time and he is an alcoholic and is a bit abusive, not necessarily to her and she basically has no money and learns to live and bring herself up. Bring, bring herself up. She just basically raises herself and she's incredible and it's so interesting and then there's like a alternate timeline where there's a murder that has happened and so one side you're seeing her grow up 
and learn all of these like life skills by herself. She learns to trade things that she fishes for with for food and things for the home and she meets a couple of guys in this storyline and one of them like teaches her how to read because she didn't get to go to school and yeah it's just it's so interesting and the idea of it is incredible and there's so much I love about this book however I struggled to read it and I don't know why it just took me a long time and I had to sort of force myself to keep reading so I don't like when I think about the story I'm like wow that was incredible but at no point was I like oh my god I can't wait to read more you know which I, I don't really understand. So like part of me is like it should be like a four star because the story is incredible and she's so strong and you know there's these, I don't know, it's just really interesting and how she raises herself basically and everyone in the town basically thinks that she's a freak and really she's just really misunderstood and no one's ever given her the time of day. And yeah, I don't know. I'm like constantly torn about this book because it's like incredible but I struggled to get through it like I struggled to read it I think it was quite slow at the start like not a lot really happened and it was obviously setting up like you could really feel that you were there it was so des descriptive and you really you were at the marsh like you were in her house you were at the beach like it was really so beautifully written but I feel like everything took a long time like sometimes I felt like things were being over explained. I was like, I don't need to know what this man in the corner of the courtroom does for a living, you know, like, I don't know. But then it was so incredible at the same time. So I don't know if that makes it like intriguing to read or not. If you haven't already read it, I feel like everyone and their dog have read this book. So I was very late to the party. I literally read it because I wanted to watch the movie, which I still haven't even watched. So yeah, I don't know. It was, it's like incredible. But for some reason I struggled to like get into it at the same time. So, I don't know. Beautiful, but I don't know. I don't know. I next read Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I went back to TJR. And this I rated a three star. Now I didn't love this, but mainly because I kind of hated the main character. And I don't know if that's because I couldn't relate to her because... I don't know, I don't think it's a spoiler because it's like pretty much about, I mean it's like the, the start of the book is that this lady's husband dies. So the whole story is basically her in mourning from her husband. There's two timelines as there always is in a Taylor Jenkins Reid book so far that I've read. At least all the ones that are like love stories I should say. Seem to have two timelines which I generally love in a book. I like having two timelines and I think in this book one of the timelines is the only reason I read because I kind of hated the other one. So one timeline was the couple falling in love and it was really beautiful and romantic and, you know, love. And the second, the other, the parallel, parallel? Then the other storyline was her mourning after he has died. Now, I obviously have... I have never lost anyone close to me, let alone my husband. So I really couldn't relate to her and I feel like maybe if you have lost someone that important to you it would really resonate with you possibly but I just kind of hated her and I know that sounds really bad because she is like this poor woman who's lost her husband and yeah I don't know I just kind of couldn't stand her and like you're in her head the whole time like the whole story is from her point of view you're in her mind like she's telling you all of her thoughts while thing ha things happen and I just didn't like her and I I really then struggled to yet yeah, resonate with much that she said. I found her a bit annoying. I felt bad for her sister because her sister was so helpful to her and so beautiful and she just like, I don't know, she just, she kind of killed me. And so would I recommend this? I'm not sure. There's a lot of other books by Taylor Jenkins Reid that I would put much higher on this list. However, I still rated it a three star and I still got through it quite quickly. It was quite easy to read. And it was quite beautiful watching her come out the other end of this morning. And obviously when you lose someone like that, you're mourning forever in a way. And you never, I feel like you never fully heal. However, it was really interesting to see how she grew and changed over these few years. So, yeah. 
it wouldn't be my first recommendation of Taylor Jenkins Reads books, let's say that. I think it's the only one that Rachel Catherine has not read yet and I was talking to her about it and I was like, look, don't rush into it because I don't think you're going to love it. <laughs> it's okay, but there are much other books that you will enjoy first. Now, once I finished that, I decided it was time to read the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy. I have seen that it was on Amazon, I kept thinking I really want to watch this, but I like to read before I watch something. I don't like going into something that I've already watched and then reading it. I'm just not into that. So I decided to read the books. I actually read all three before I watched the TV show just because I then got in a roll of reading them. And once you're in a, a world and a story, it's hard to like not just continue. So I read all three of them quite quickly and I really enjoyed them. Nothing groundbreaking as far as like romances or the writing, but I thoroughly enjoyed them. I loved the characters. They were all quite flawed in their own ways, like very, very real, which I love and just very relatable. I did worry. I found the first one was a little bit cringe in the way of Belly being like quite young spirited or just quite young in general. Like she was very immature. Not, I just felt like she was very 16, which she is in the book. So, you know, maybe I'm just getting old for YA. But I love YA, so I'm probably not going to stop reading YA. But it was very young adult at the start, or very like teen, I should say even. Like as a 16 year old, I would have devoured these books. I loved them. And yeah, I really enjoyed the stories. All three of them were really easy to read, really quick to read, very interesting. Summer vibes, which I love, like they were in a beach house and yeah, they were really, really interesting. I am definitely Team Conrad, although also Team Belly should have just found a guy in a different family because the main trope is like brothers, which I'm just not into. And she gets quite serious with both of them, which I'm really not that into. So yeah, as far as like tropes that I hate, people getting involved with multiple people in the same family is just not a vibe to me because I just feel like that would cause a lot of drama. Sorry, just my alarm. Got brownies in the oven, can't forget them, but I reckon I'll give it another five minutes, which means I have to hurry up and finish talking to you. And so yeah, I think I gave all of them four stars or three and a half, I think four. They were nice, easy reads. Definitely something if you need like a bit of a palate cleanser and something that's not going to A, rip your heart out, to have you thinking too hard like they were very just like easy books to read a couple of real life serious issues in there too which i appreciated and then the tv show was also quite good very there's lots of bits i know they have to like make new things in tv shows and movies but i hate when they add in like total new facts and storylines like there was no deb ball in the books that she went to but whatever it was still really good. So I would recommend all three of them. I would recommend Rachel got the books on Amazon and got like really nice covers. I read them all on my Kindle, so I don't have the physical copies. However, if you were wanting physical copies, the ones here in Australia are so ugly. Like all of them are ugly, 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 ugly. So I would recommend jumping onto Amazon and getting like the American covers because they are stunning. Okay, the last book I'm gonna talk about. Maybe I should have done this earlier. I was like, oh, I haven't read that many books lately. I don't have much to talk about. I was wrong. The last book I'm going to talk about, I actually just finished last night and I'm loving it. And it's the first book out of a series and it is the Inheritance Games books, which I am loving. It's a YA mystery and something different to what I have been reading. I've been reading a lot of romance this year and I just felt like something different. I've seen like my friend Ella loves them has highly recommended them, Rachel loves them, has highly recommended them. And so I just figured, you know what, it's about time. I need to jump on the bandwagon, I need to read them, and I love them. Very easy to read and quick to read as far as like a mystery goes, because they are YA, so like not too tricky. But I think, I think it was Ella that said, and then Rachel also said, it's like an escape room in a book, which I just love. Like, it's about a girl called Avery and basically she inherits billions of dollars from a complete stranger 
but this stranger should have, well, you would think he would give away his entire estate and all of his funds to his family. But basically his family have been sort of scrapped from the will. They get a little bit each, but compared, considering he has billions of dollars, they really got thrown under the bus. And so she has no idea why it's been left to her. And there are four grandsons that this Mr. Hawthorne has. And the four of them and Avery, the girl who has inherited billions of dollars, are trying to figure out why on earth he left everything he owned basically to her and it's just so much fun like there's like secret passages in the house there's notes there's little clues like oh it's just interesting and so different to anything I've read as of late and so I'm just frothing it to be honest and so I've started the second one today and that will be in my next book video which hopefully will be more frequent I'm gonna try and keep things rolling a little bit better and keep you guys up to date on what I'm reading. I would love as always to know what you're reading this week. That's my favorite thing is to know what other people are reading. I would love to know any of your recommendations currently because once I've finished these books, there's only one other book that I know I'll read soon and that's It Starts With Us which comes out on the 18th. I'm hoping I can smash out the next two Inheritance Games books in time for the 18th then read It Ends With Us, It Starts With Us and then who knows what I'm going to be reading. So feel free to drop your suggestions below. I love hearing them always. Thank you so, so much for listening to me talk for so long about books. I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next video, which will be very soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.